There's too many attractive women in the house, honey. I don't want to be a product of my environment. I want my environment to be a product of me. Prestige Living Podcast. So with that, who do you want to be? Hello, welcome to Prestige Living, your audio feed that delivers the great minds and ambitious business leaders of Orange County. I'm your host, Jay O'Brien, here with your co-hosts, Jordan Wilson. Yes. And Kane German. Yes. Today, our guest delivers unique solutions, very unique, for tanning and waxing. Her services include organic airbrush tanning and sugaring. You may have seen her in Riviera Magazine, Los Angeles Confidential, and Us Weekly Magazine. Her name is Jenny White, and we are so happy to have her here with us today. Jenny, welcome to the show. Yeah. Yay. Thanks for having me. Faux show. Is your mom home? (laughs) (laughs) So this is awkward because she's extremely young and, and, (laughs) and successful, but you can tell from her voice that she's quite childish. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. Um, Okay. So bronzed bunny is the name of the company. And when did it begin? It began in July, uh, 2011. Actually, that's when I opened my first location, but it sort of, there was a little side note to that because I did start doing mobile before I got my first location, and I got so busy that within two months, um, my husband at the time was like, you can't have girls come to the house anymore. It's embarrassing. They're naked. I don't want to look at it. I know, right? That's why we're not married anymore. Um, (laughs) Say, me, Jay, and Kane all just made the same look. There's too many attractive women in the house, honey. (laughs) And he literally said, um, you need to go get a space. And I'm thinking, what? This is my shopping money. Like, this isn't a career. I'm just doing this for fun. And I really was at the time just doing it for fun. So um, two days later, I signed the lease for my first location, which was a little bit bigger than this room. And um, in seven months. Okay, you're better than me. (laughs) (laughs) You need to upgrade your office, man. (laughs) And uh, in seven months, uh, we even grew out of that space. And that's when... Bronze Bunny, the the spa was born. So, if you were to say what you do in one sentence, what would it be? Uh, I I help the women of the world one vagina at a time. You know what? That's our motto here too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, Jordan, one at a time. <laughs> oh. Seems like we got an underachiever on. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, there's a bunch of terminology that I'm unfamiliar with on here. Um, not vagina, I know that one. <laughs> I was going to start but, with that. But, but the sugaring, what is that all about? And the spray tan, I know people like have gone tanning and like the spray tan stuff, I kind of understand, but what makes your stuff different? Like, what, what's it all about? Well, to start off, sugaring, uh, it's the oldest form of hair removal. Cleopatra used to do it. It's old, 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 but for some reason it's now coming back and it's the way of the future. Um, It's literally sugar, water, and lemon. Um, It's not as easy as it sounds to make. We do still get ours from another company. Uh, We are working on doing our own sugar line as well, Sugar Bell Organic, uh, coming very soon. Um, Sugar is the only thing that can get deep down into the follicle and pull out the whole root. As opposed to waxing, you break it at the surface or at the shaft, which gives you uh, kind of quick times, you know, that it, that it grows back. I hear breaking at the shafts like really bad. <laughs> <laughs> is this painful? Definitely. Is um, sugaring painful? It's less painful than waxing, but uh, more, more painful, obviously, than shaving. And if you come from shaving, the hair is very strong and does not want to come out of the skin. So all of our bunnies that are coming to us for the first time to try sugar, we always tell them, hey, if you're coming from shaving, the first time is going to be a little rough. But with that said, we give you organic shots of vodka and pink bellinis. So Take the edge off. Yeah. I love this. Now, if Jordan goes in there tomorrow and gets sugared, Every are you head gonna, to toe. Are you going to call him a bunny too? Absolutely. Oh, well, you would be a hare. Got oh. H-A-R-E. Yeah, we call them the, the golden <laughs> hares. 
Wow, oh, yeah. this is interesting. Okay, so <laughs> if, you do, if you go through the sugaring process, how long is it before you got to go back again? So with sugaring, it's uh, about four weeks. Everyone's different, obviously. If you're taking you know, a lot of vitamins or prenatals or biotin or things like that, it's going to uh, speed up the process. But um, four, four weeks, and waxing can be early as two weeks. You have to go back. So, And where, I'm sorry, where's your location? Uh, we have two. We have one in Newport Beach and one in Studio City. Awesome. Prior to 2011, what were you doing? <laughs> what wasn't I doing? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, I kind of started off, I was the, early, I was the youngest uh, freelance makeup artist that Estee Lauder ever hired. At 17 years old, wow. I was in a navy blue smock and stockings, and I was still in high school. And on the weekends, I would go and I would do makeup. And um, I was making $13 an hour, which in high school, that was awesome. Yep. Um, and it, that's kind of what started it. And so from 1997 to, uh, to now, I mean, I, I've been in the beauty industry and um, I was a freelance artist for a couple different lines. Uh, I was a cosmetic manager at Nordstrom's and then I got my claim to fame <laughs> at Gulfstream in Newport Beach. I was there for six and a half years. I got a couple articles written about me in the newspaper for being there. Gulfstream is a restaurant. Yes. Please elaborate. <laughs> so, um, kind of to make ends meet, I was always kind of a, I always call myself a hustler. And uh, I made a lot of co connections working at Gulfstream. And I went right from working at Nordstrom's to working cocktail because I made more money, basically. Right. But I always had the love of, you know, the cosmetic industry and makeup and all things girly. Um, so Gulfstream was kind of a stepping stone. And uh, at the time at Gulfstream, I, I made a really good living there. I was there for six and a half years and then I got fired. Best thing that ever happened to me. Is this what the write-up is about? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um, I got fired and from there I like bounced around to a couple other bars, Hush and Laguna, which is now closed mm -hmm. thanks to their cocaine ring. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and Jenny, then, what did you do to get fired? <laughs> Make up a really good story if it's not good. You know, actually, it, I wish I had a good story. They were cleaning house, and I was never the robot that they wanted me to be. And I always had an opinion about everything and the way things that, you know, the way it should be ran. And we always had new managers, and I kind of ran the show there. And when they told me I couldn't run the show anymore, then I fought back, and they didn't like that. Hillstone. So. Hillstone's like Hillstone. that. There's oh. a guy, There's one of the agents in our office was at Houston's for almost 10 years. Yeah. He said the same, he's saying the same thing that you're saying. Like the worst company ever to work for. <laughs> Ouch. Burn. Uh. Um, okay, so you you were in the W-2 realm where, you know, you were, you were making a living, and you were doing the freelance stuff on the side. Mm -hmm. Then come 2011, you're like, what, you just pulled the plug on Gulfstream and all that stuff all together? You just went all out yeah, on your own? Yeah, so actually 2010, um, I was, I started, anything you wanted, I had in the trunk of my car. So if you wanted a massage, I was a massage therapist. If you wanted eyelash extensions, I did eyelash extensions. I literally had all of these businesses out of the trunk of my car just to try to make it work. Uh -huh. And um, I thought about doing tanning because I loved it and I always hated something about everywhere I went, whether it was the girl that was doing it or the solution or the dark, dirty room that you stood in. I always hated something about tanning and I said, you know what, I want to make this experience amazing. I want to I set, I want set out to create the perfect experience and, and entered Bronze Bunny. So explain the experience. I've never tanned a day in my life except super, super organically by the sun. And when you are when you go out and you do this, what does it look like when someone comes in to your office and they, you know, they um, get the services performed and all this stuff? Like what makes the experience so different? Now walk us it, through it. Yeah, what, what's so great about it? Um, well, you're enter, uh, you enter in and we immediately offer you a cocktail. We love that. Check. Awesome. Yeah. Um, you're Even if it's 10 in the morning? Oh, yeah. Mimosa, yeah. mimosa or Bellini, she said. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bellini. Okay. <laughs> and the best is when people look at you like, are you an alcoholic? And yeah, we actually are. Um, <laughs> and with, with gusto. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're greeted with a cocktail, a really good one, um, with crystal you know, champagne glasses. And uh, you're also greeted by an amazing staff. We are known to hire the hottest girls 
around. That's kind of my thing. So we'll like you on Facebook and then find yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Friend request the whole Cut stuff. Yeah. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay. Yeah. yeah, not only do you have to be beautiful, but you have to be smart. That's why some people get fired. Um, mm. So yeah, so you're you're greeted by a, a beautiful yet smart bunny, and um, you're taken into a tanning room or a sugar room. And our rooms aren't your typical tanning salon or waxing rooms. We really went all out at creating this amazing space, and uh, it's it's one of those things you really just have to experience it for yourself. Okay, well. I will then. <laughs> I like cocktails and beautiful women. That sounds good to me. So when you guys opened your doors, did you start with Newport or Studio City? We started with Newport. Um, I was in that small space in Costa Mesa for only seven months, and then we um, we opened the, the bigger location in, in Newport in uh January that next year after July 2011. Okay. Now, a lot of, a lot of people like – of our age and our generation that are starting businesses for the first time, um, a lot of them go into spaces that don't require a ton of capital. Mm-hmm. That you know they they're like a, a computer repair person or it, a realtor, right? Like it's a realtor. You don't have that much capital that is required in the beginning, right? And a lot of service based things, teaching music lessons and whatnot. Um, but this is a brick and mortar business that requires a lease and like monthly financial obligations that you cannot get out of whether the business does well or not. So how do you handle something like that? Um, great question. Um, I, I signed that lease. The first lease I signed was $500 a month. It was like no big deal. Um, the second lease I signed was also pretty inexpensive, but at the time, not ever having really my own big thing. I mean, the, the small space I had in Costa Mesa was so small and it was totally doable. This was like a really big step and a really big risk for me. And I literally had no money. I got no help. I support my mom. I, uh, I, I really am the only person. <laughs> so love it. Let's get let's get into that. <laughs> oh, well, I had a question. Um, you said you did mobile before. Was that your business or? It was. So yeah. when you so I'm assuming you sold the mobile business or did you? I didn't that sell just, it. I just transitioned. Yeah. So you brought a, like a book of clients with you when you yeah. started. Okay. And that's why we were able to grow out of the Costa Mesa space so quickly. Was I I. Um, I knew I know so many people in Orange County, and uh, it was kind of an instant success, luckily. Uh, but moving into the Newport Beach location and us having a whole new menu of services, when I was in Costa Mesa, I just we just offered tanning. We were just a little room, and um, in the new space, we did you know sugaring and facials and all this other stuff. And I literally had <laughs> like a thousand dollars in my bank account. Literally, um, and I not only built that space out with. Um, with hugs, I did. I gave a lot of hugs. <laughs> um, I asked a lot mm-hmm. of favors. Yeah, I asked a lot of favors. I think I'm still paying those favors back. <laughs> um, that kind of sounded bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I, uh, you really can do anything you want if you put your mind to it. I had no idea how I was going to build that space out, and actually, the space wasn't even on the market. It should have been condemned. Uh, there was like a hole in the ceiling. It was 150 years old. It's an old building. Uh, I mean, it's, it's old. It used to be a brothel, supposedly, and it's haunted. Um, so far, our second guest who took over a brothel. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yes. Awesome. Where did you, like, you said you have no idea how to build up the business. Did you draw from other salons, or how did you get... You know the inspiration. I read on the website. You said it's very chic, very old Hollywood, yeah. something like that. Where did you go for inspiration? Um, I feel like in another life I was an interior designer. Uh, it's always been something I've really been interested in, and I don't know what it was, but I went in that space that was. I mean, it was a shithole. Um, the only other person that could vouch for that is uh, Whitney, who's my director of operations slash best friend. I took her there and I mean, you can kind of tell she's looking at me like, please don't get this space. Like, what the fuck are you thinking? (laughs) And um, I signed the lease and I was like, let's do this. And it had two walls and um, and that was it. It was a big open space with disgusting carpet and um, it it came to life. And like I said, you really do have to open those doors, that door when you walk in and you just get this feeling. It's like got all these nooks and crannies and it's really, really cool inside. So for all the tenant improvements and stuff, 
is that stuff that you were personally doing or you had friends that would help out or what? Um, I did a lot of it. My mom did a lot of it. And then, like I said, I had a, a friend that was a contractor and I, I literally was like, I have no money. Please help me. Help me. I'm poor. Please, yeah, help me. I'm poor. <laughs> um, I did a lot of that and, uh, and it worked and, and I, and I did pay everyone back. So that was good. And, um, it, it was, it was a really cool experience, and I'm glad it didn't happen any other way. If I would have been funded by somebody else or something like that, you wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had the blood, sweat, and tears, and I wouldn't have appreciated, I think, where I've gotten now. Um, it was a really cool process. Yeah. I definitely stressed out a lot, but I never doubted myself. I always believed that I would make it work. I always had in the past, and I knew I wouldn't, I knew I wouldn't fail. How long did it take before you hit that break even or or even positive ROI moment the the week we opened our doors oh wow boom yeah so no more thousand dollars in the checking account thank, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much it um it it turned over pretty fast it was awesome and because we had such a huge clientele i mean in costa mesa i was doing on my own 30 tans a day i was sweating and and like i we, we had a lot of business, and to open that new location with now one, two tanning rooms, two sugar rooms. The sugar took a little bit longer because people weren't aware of what sugaring was, and people are still learning what sugaring is, but as far as the tanning side, I mean, there's days that we're doing 80 to 100 tans, so it's... How many employees do you have? Total, now we have 10. Wow. How did you start yeah. off with that, that location? Uh, two. How do you determine pricing with this? But do you do you, is it kind of like an industry standard, or because you provide? It sounds like you provide like an upper level of service, whether it's you know the salon itself or just the kind of I don't know concierge type service, for lack of a better word. Like you can charge a premium for this, or is there kind of like an industry? So we come in right at the middle of where it's at, we could definitely charge more. We should be charging more. And I've actually never raised my prices um, since the day I opened. And um, I I think that's what keeps us super busy and really steady. Um, You know, I think there's people that are charging 59 to 65 in the industry. And so we come in at 45 and we're always doing deals and we really uh, work hard at trying to keep those clients. What's your role? You're probably not the one performing the services any longer, I would imagine. No, I just hang out. Drink. And, 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 and drink. I love that. Yeah. Um, my husband, my new husband, calls it... Um, L- the, the sequel, we'll call him. Yeah, the sequel. Um, he calls it LOLing, Life of Leisure, or Lady of Leisure. No, um, I work my ass off. I still work my ass off. I'm constantly working. I have people that ask me all the time, oh, did you work today, or are you working today? And um, I'm working every minute of every day. It's just the way it is. Thank God we have social media and things like free outlets for me to use to build more business business because if I can't sleep at night, I can work at 2.30 in the morning or 3 in the morning. So when you went from performing services like this in the freelance world and then now owning a business like this, um, do you find it difficult being responsible for the growth of the company more so than actually just performing the service that's being paid for? Um, I'm sorry, ask that question one more time. So like in your role now, you own you own the company, right? So. Your your primary goal is to grow it, not to just, hey, customer comes in, perform the service, they leave. Instead, it's much more hands-off where it's like, I have to make this business grow on a much like more granular scale. So what is that? Is that a difficult thing to adjust to? It's like different shoes to be in. Yeah, um, we we do a lot of like, I mean, we're referral based only. We really don't do a lot of uh, promoting or um, marketing. I mean, I do my own free marketing with social media and stuff, but um, we're getting ready to open a flagship location. Uh, we're going to be closing Newport and opening the big Bronze Bunny, uh, which is also going to be in Newport. Hopefully, we're trying to get our location right now. Um, and with that said, we are going to be focusing a lot on getting new business. Right now, we're kind of at capacity in Newport, which is amazing. I never thought that that would happen, where we would be, where we would be turning clients away. But um, with the new flagship location, we're going to be doubling in size. Oh, great. Is that the only difference? Or are you going to offer different services? Or we're actually going to cut down on our services. Um, we brought things like facials in uh, because we had clients that wanted them, and and again, being in the beauty industry for so long, I started this business to specialize in something, and um, us doing so many different things and wearing so many different hats, we weren't putting 
everything into those specific services. So now we're just going to be doing tanning and sugaring and body services, like body facials. Yeah, you don't want to go back to like all those businesses out of your trunk again. You know, you don't want to be that. No, no more businesses. I have no, no. room in my trunk. <laughs> my trunk is full. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I, I like looked at my computer pretending to do something just now because I'm like, I'm a, I don't want to respond to that. <laughs> Husband oh, I, number I can three. Keep going. I can keep going. That would be so bad. I'm going for that. Um, okay, so what what pisses you off like more than anything with um, maybe the perception of the industry or like the worst client you've ever had? Maybe someone who's entitled. Like, what just grinds you to your core? Um, let's start with perception. Um, we hire these girls, right? Um, and they come in because they follow us on Instagram or whatever it is, and they have this idea already of what Bronze Bunny is and what we do there um, because they're looking at selfies that we take or Snapchats or whatever. And they come in and, and they realize that we work our asses off. When you're there and you clock in, you're working. There's like, yeah, there's some downtime to hang out and have a good time. We definitely have fun there. But these girls come in and think that they can just sit at the desk and they're going to be, you know, spray tanning housewives and models. And yeah, that's a lot of it. But, um, some of these bitches don't want to work and it's super annoying and it pisses me off because it took a lot of hard work to get to this point and to see girls come in and just think that they can like, you know, sip a glass of champagne and wait for clients to come in is it's mind blowing, but it happens. So the employees are allowed to drink. (coughs) Yeah. So just leave leave an application. I was just going to say, I was going to say, I think we need three applications (laughs) here, please. I'm a pretty lenient boss. Uh, I'm I'm super lenient as long as you're doing your job. And you know, part of the reason why people come to us is for the whole experience, and that includes the girls. And the girls are relatable. And um, you know, the clients come in and they feel like they're hanging out with their girlfriends, and that's what I want. Um, but I also want them to work hard because if they don't work hard, then my business fails. Yeah, that makes sense because I mean. I just recently went to a restaurant where I could, it was a nice restaurant. I could really tell the server just hated his life. And you don't, you want to go somewhere where people that are working there are having a good time too. And then you can tell that they care about what they're doing. It's, you know, it translates to a better experience all the way around. I think. Yeah. The the worst is when you walk into a place and they greet you and they say, Hey, how you doing? I'm like, I'm great. How are you doing? Like, good. You know, it's Friday. Or good, you know, I've only got three hours left. I'm like, another Dude, day, another that's dollar. That's not yeah. what you tell a customer. <laughs> like, you don't say that to me, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so, how did you get so? It looks like you guys blew up very quickly. How did you go from doing it from out of your car to getting um, a location, and like months later, you went to another one? Like, did you did you spend a lot of money in marketing there, or is it just still the free marketing? So, free marketing and really. Um, really word of mouth. I mean, because I knew so many people in Orange County when I was doing mobile, I got so busy, which is why mobile had to end. I got so busy driving to people's houses that I started having them come to my home, enter the angry husband. I remember that story. (laughs) I'm going to remember that story forever. Yeah. (laughs) And then, um, I, I, because I couldn't do them in my home anymore, I'm like, okay, I'll open a space. And it was, it was busy instantly. So yeah, we also use something called Yelp. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Yelp. Was it was it Yelp you said? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> write that write that down. Can you spell that for me? <laughs> <laughs> Yelp is um it's a good thing and a bad thing. It's a good thing when you have real Yelp reviews, it's a bad thing when you have fake ones. Oh yeah. And unfortunately, we have a lot of haters in Orange County and we have a lot of haters in LA, um, other tanning businesses uh, that have written bad reviews. Like so so obvious that it's them and it's not actual clients. So if you look at our Yelp reviews, we have amazing, we're almost at 200 Yelp reviews in Orange County um, alone. I think we have 125 in LA. Um, you know, there, there's a few one stars on there and those people know who they are. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, that Yelp, you're right. It can be a good thing. It can be a bad thing. I've, I've read Yelp reviews for like restaurants and stuff like that where it says, you know, the, the wait for a table was an hour long. We didn't even eat here. One star review. I'm like, how can you give a review when you didn't even... Okay, so what you're saying right now, <laughs> that's how other consumers will read it. Yeah. So it actually, I think it's all good. I mean, I've gotten reviews. Um, the only negative reviews on my Yelp are from people who I've never met. Um and I don't know what really goes behind that, like why someone wants to spend the time or energy to do that. But regardless, you're doing something that's pissing them off. Mm-hmm. Sorry, we're, sorry, we're popular and we're busy. People don't want <laughs> yeah. to see you be successful. They yeah. want to see you fail. 
Um, unfortunately, even people that are very close to you, you know, that's why you're discouraged from taking risks. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, don't do that. Don't open this shop. Don't sign this. Don't whatever, because it's like, I'm scared that it might work out for you. And with Yelp, it's like, it's clear as day what's authentic and what's not. Totally. And so if 200 people have taken the time to write about you, whether it's good or bad, clearly you're doing something right. Yeah. I can't believe it's that competitive where other salons and stuff are trying to s- sabotage you. And it's these small salons, which is so funny. It, it, at the end of the day, there's so much, there's enough business for everyone. It, it, we off, we know what we offer and we offer something really special. If someone wants to go try to replicate that or whatever it may be, I mean, more power to you, but my biggest thing is karma is a bitch. And if you want to fuck with us and write bad Yelp reviews, good luck. Like, I don't know what to tell you. And people always say, oh, well, do you want us to go on and write a bad review about them? Absolutely not. Right. They'll get their own when it's when it's their time. I'm not I'm not about fighting back like that. What's the most difficult adjustment that you've had to um, that you had to o- overcome now with your success? Like now that you've picked up this steam and you've seen this presence and like you know you're you're overwhelmed in Newport Beach with like the level of clientele. What's what's one of the things that's really hard to adjust to because you've seen this growth? Um, now that we have two locations, it's really hard for me to be everywhere at once. And um, LA is, uh, I'm sure you've driven to LA, right? Once or twice. Un- unfortunately, I have, yeah. God, it's a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Um, I moved up there for a year to open that location. I worked there every day for a year. Um, that was really challenging. And um, I'd say that that's the hardest part. I mean, that and also hiring. Because if you don't hire the right people, your business will never grow. You'll you're stuck. How's the retention? Is it okay with your employees? Or are you getting rid of rid of them pretty often? Orange County is great. LA, we had a lot of turnover. Um, some people think that because they were in a Colgate commercial, that like for some reason they don't have to work. Um, so <laughs> yeah, it's really weird. LA, LA, we had a lot of girls that felt very entitled, and and again, there are girls sitting in front of me interviewing for the job. So I don't care what you do when you're outside of outside of work. You, if you want to sing karaoke at a bar, great. If you want to be in a commercial, great. But when you when you clock into Bronze Bunny, you actually have to work. So um, that was really difficult, and the retention's been not great there. But now we have a really good team, and they're rocking. How many people are over there? We have uh, five. Nice. Yeah. So with the flagship store opening, you're going to be closing the current Newport location. Yeah. What do you see beyond that for Bronze Bunny? Do you want to see like you you want to you know expand exponentially, or do you want to keep it kind of like the boutique feel? Or so we are expanding. We're going to be doing five locations over the next few years. Oh wow. Um, we're already location hunting for those. Um, we have really big things for the Bronze Bunny. Not only are we improving our product line, but we're going to be launching new products, and uh, we're going to try to go international with it. How much of it is tanning versus the hair removal? Tanning right now makes up about 60%, 70%. Okay. Yeah. It's Tanning is our, it's our little gold mine. And sugaring, again, people are still wondering what the hell sugaring is. And um, I feel like actually this year it's finally getting really popular. We're noticing a lot of tanning and sugaring places open. I'm not going to say I was the first. Mm, Trendsetter. (laughs) (laughs) You think you'll ever go to people's houses and do it there, like do a mobile? So I do do that for my celebrity clients in LA. Okay. I'm still I'm still for hire. (laughs) Got it. So if you've been in the Colgate commercial, people will still come to the house. (laughs) Yes. Do you Perfect. do tanning beds or, dude, see how much clearer I am? Jeez. Tanning <laughs> beds or spray tan? Only spray tan. Okay. Yeah, tanning beds, um, they cause cancer. Oh, I've so heard now, of that. I've heard study. of cancer. Yeah. What, uh, tell us, because I mean, I, I'm not sure, what makes the, the spray tan that you do organic versus a non organic spray tan? Like, So most of the spray tans on the market are, um, they're, they, they're like 70 to 80% chemicals. We have ingredients in it like vitamins A, C, and E, and CoQ10, green tea extract, um, caffeine for cellulite, um, a lot of anti-aging ingredients. Um, you can't get anything 100% organic in the spray tan industry because DHA, which is the actual thing that turns your skin a different color, that is, uh, it's you, you can't get it organic. So it's eco-certified DHA. We use the highest quality, and that's why you don't turn orange, and that's why you don't smell. 
Yeah, I was going to ask about the smelling, actually. And a guest that we had here um, a few weeks back, he created a drink. He's a dermatologist. He created a drink called UVO, and it's um, it's actually a beverage to protect you from the sun. It's pretty wow. interesting. You should check it out. Yeah. Very cool. Um, Can you spray tan abs on all three of us when we're done with this? Um, I am an artist. Yes, <laughs> I actually can. That's the, the number Sistine one. Chapel is right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's the number one question guys will ask. How, how many, I mean, of the whole thing, like, what percentage of straight men are going and using your services? Honestly... Five percent. Yeah. Yeah, and and we do have cold PBRs for you guys. We we don't get super girly. We don't make you hold a glass with pink champagne in it. Um, you mean uh, lettuce? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna knock down a few mimosas in my day. <laughs> you can definitely come and bro out there. Obviously, like I said, the girls are great to look at, and it's a really fun environment. So we are encouraging all of our females to bring their husbands in to let them get over the fact that. It's okay, like, dude, spray tan. They just don't talk about it. You're not going to leave here and go get a spray tan and then call him and be like, dude, I just had the best spray tan. It was so amazing. My abs look awesome. You Our relationship is it. not... <laughs> <laughs> again, I'll never do that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll do anything twice, but uh, anything. <laughs> so, so you said you're expanding, you're opening up a larger location, and in the next five years you plan to go international. Yes. That is really exciting. Yeah, we want to take our solution um, overseas, and Australia is actually, and the UK is a huge, has a huge sunless tanning industry. So yeah, there's no to... sun in the UK. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm curious about the sugaring thing. Is it just like <laughs> no, no serious, serious question? You said it was just like sugar, water, and lemon. Right? Sugar, water, and lemon. Yeah, it almost looks like caramel. And how is so okay? So is it still like the procedure where you put it on and you put the little paper on it and like you go like that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so no, it, no paper though. It's all. It, it's just sugar. So there's no strips. Okay. And there's so no how, double dipping. So how do you? Okay. So once you put the sugar on, say the arm, it's like near or what? And then how does that? How do you remove it? So it's like. The listeners can't see this. They but can't. I like, wish they could. She's, she's caressing his arm. <laughs> and then you flick it off, and all that. And you can use one ball of sugar and then, for then she a yeah. lot of different body parts. Except for men, we don't do cracks or sacks. No cracks or sacks. I feel like that yeah. should be a hashtag somewhere. In LA, in LA, we do. So if you want to get your crack or sack, sure. Oh, like, okay. So, there. yeah, why, why not here? Yeah. Um, you know too many people in Orange County? <laughs> <laughs> it's. It's just not really popular here, and, and actually we, um, we we make you kind of get like a referral to do it. We don't just take any random person off the street. The VIP list. Because guys get weird. Guys are weird. I'm sure not if you have you pretty... Guys. No, I'm sure... Like, I'm no, sure. no, we're, 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 we're weird. I'm sure yeah. if you have Wait, pretty girls. How does referral thing work? Like, hey, my friend Brent sent me here to get my ass and sack done. Yeah, so yeah, that, that could happen. Also, like, you know, a wife could say, hey, I really want my guy to get sugared um can he come in we don't just take like we've had a lot of bad experiences and that's why we have to do it that way i'm sure if you have like a pretty girl in the room you know like with a dude's ass and crack or sack and crack out i was gonna say the fact that you guys don't do it that's like a huge white space but it's actually not so white (laughs) (laughs) joe ryan but i'm here all week no uh, i i won't be but um (laughs) okay what else what else you guys got Nothing? I'm trying to... I feel like... I, I feel like, like there's just, so much. I just need to go there and, and see what this is all about. Yeah, Should you really do. And see how influential I can be with them to see if they will do a sack. Get us and, all and on the VIP seem, sack and crack list. You seem like a nice guy. I think, oh, they, would, oh, I think they would sugar oh, your... Oh. I think they would sugar your crack. God damn. Hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> I'll put in a good on. word for you. Thank you. I'm oh. still stuck on sugar, water, and lemon. How is that supposed to work? It's an old recipe, like like thousands of years old. It's just um, the way that they warm it up makes it a certain consistency, and it it looks like it's wax. Sticky, right? It's really sticky, yeah. And it's the mm. only thing that can go down into the follicle and pull at the whole root. Waxing sometimes can actually rip your skin off. So the the sugar water it, it dries. I'm assuming, or does it it it's doesn't not, dry and then you flick it off? And it's not sugar water. It's sugar water. Sugar and lemon. comma water yes, comma yes, lemon. Yes. And um, comma. It, it's. It just stays at same consistency the whole time, and you just put it on, and it's real quick. And flick it off with what? You know, f- flicking I guess is a bad word. It's like 
It's like this motion. A gentle rem- It's back- like a backhand, but, it's like but a backhand. brushing. Yeah, yeah. It's a, backhand. a brushing motion. Is there a tool involved, or is no. it? A, it's just your hand. It's a glove, hand. She's and like, the how many more times do you want me to tell you there's no tool? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need a video. Maybe we need a video. <laughs> like an illustration. Yeah. Oh my god, that'd be perfect. Look in her purse, dude. She used to have all this shit back there. It's like the shoplifter special. Look at that. <laughs> all right, Jenny White. Where can people find you? Um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. We are at Bronzed Bunny on Instagram, and we actually are on Twitter as well. But I don't tweet. I don't know why. It's so hard for me to do the Twitter thing. I'm just. So all the news updates primarily are through Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Not yeah. so much on Facebook. And then on Facebook. Too. Facebook. Yeah, we're Bronze Bunny on Facebook. We have one for each location. Got it. And do you have a website? Yes, bronzebunny.com. Oh, and I've been on it for the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Jordan, Jordan, relax. R O N Z E D. People always hear just bronze. Right, yeah, I was going to say that. It is bronzed. Bunny. Bunny.com. Okay, so we got Newport Beach and Studio City, and then the new location. Um, when can we expect that to be open? Um, we're we're doing the CAD drawing right now, so... Mm-hmm. And you know uh, every time there's a CAD drawing, <laughs> it means one month. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, hopefully by January. Cool, cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for thank being you. on the show. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Thank you. If you would like to be on the Prestige Living Podcast or know someone that would be a great guest, Go to www.prestigelivingpodcast.com. We'd love to.